What's up guys, so welcome back to another episode of Hearthstone Free to Play. In this episode, we are going to go ahead and do our first quest. As you can see when we log back in, we have a lot more quests to do. It's been like two days since I've played two, so you get a quest a day and since I haven't played in two days, you get two. And since they're doing this free promotion for getting free packs, they have this, which I really need to do today as well. But I did promise you guys last time that Arena was going to be our next episode. And I made a promise to someone else that I was going to do Arena to show them how to play. Because they're getting into Hearthstone now. So, got to do that. And in a free-to-play account, Arena is probably just the most important thing to do. Because Arena, just you can win packs, gold, and um, just cards as well. So, Arena gets a lot of value. And your first Arena run is actually free. But then after that, it costs 150 gold to participate, as you can see. See, the Arena usually requires an entrance fee. But since it's your first time here, it's on the house. Which is great. So how it works is you choose a hero and then you build your deck. Like you get three choices and you just like draft. Kind of, I guess you can call it. Right? I'm going to go ahead and pick the rogue. Since we played so much mage, I just want to pick a rogue. And holy moly, that's retarded. We got a legendary on the first pick, guys. That is crazy. <laughs> so how you want to make your deck is you usually want to have this curve here. Like the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 plus. You want to have it like kind of evened out, you know, because you don't want to have too many like early game cards and not have enough late game cards. Um, you want to have like a good mix or whatever. <laughs> so we're going to get this guy. And the real peddler could be really good if you get more swash burglars and stuff like that. This guy is pretty good. Um... Let's get unstable ghoul. He's like area of effect, right? And this guy can help us trade. Uh, this is a hard choice. This is a really hard choice, actually. I'm gonna go journey below just because it gives us more options. I'll get corrupted heal bot. I love Clad Veer Raider. We need more early game cards, though, guys. 05 taunt, right? No, but it's 4 mana. We don't have any 4 mana cards, though. <laughs> we'll pick them. Micro Machine's really good. Ogre Brute's good. Tomb Pillager's really good in this deck. So you pretty much just want to make your deck based on what you think is probably best. Um, obviously there's cards that are better than others, but that doesn't always mean that it's the right choice. Sometimes your deck requires other cards to be played, like, I had no late game card, so I really needed one there, Undercity Huckster. Also can combo with that card, so I'll pick him. Um, Betrayal can be good, randomly, right? This is pretty good. I think we're done with late game cards, though, but we have no other choice here. Um... Conceal could be good too, but I think I'd rather have a minion. No mission vendor. We'll get Conceal this time. How many death rattles we have? I feel like we have like two. But we get another card that gives us a death rattle. I'll go Buccaneer. And then our one last card. We'll get a taunt. We'll get a taunt. So now with this deck, we play against other people with decks and with the similar um, records as us. So now we're going to play versus an OO guy. What I'm actually going to go ahead and do now is actually gonna screenshot the deck. Alright, because last time I forgot to screenshot the second half of the deck and it kind of looks kind of awkward. Having one portion of the deck with a correct deck list and then the other half didn't have it, but whatever. That's fine. I'm sure I got pointed out. I haven't uploaded it yet. It's actually coming up today, but I'm sure um, how YouTube works is people like to point things out like that. So I'm pretty sure you guys noticed. We're fine. A worthy opponent. Shit, we were so close to getting a Shabby Shaman. So close. Alright, let's see. So just like this, you want to have generally a really good curve. Like, this is fine. We don't have a turn 4 play, but we didn't even draft that many f turn 4 plays, right? We can, like, coin him out turn 4, right? And we can also coin out something turn 1, depending on what he plays, because let's say we coin out a 2-drop, 
our following turn is also going to be turn two, and we will have another turn two, you know, to play. So, that's pretty good. Do, do, do. So he has an opening hand card, but he's not going to play it. See, now we don't even have to coin because we have a one drop. So we have, we're missing a four drop, so maybe Polluted Hoarder is best. But Karen is really strong, so I'm going to get Karen actually. Because Karen pretty much dies and summons another copy of itself. Pretty much. It just doesn't get the death route effect again. Instead of being Karen Blood Hoof, it's a Blaine Blood Hoof. So now with turn two, we have options. We can summon this to deal one damage to random enemy. We can summon this to gain attack at the end of each turn. Or we can summon this death route guy who, if he dies, he gets a card from their deck. But why am I going to summon him? Because I have this guy, which I can, if he lives turn three, I could summon him. Which copies a friendly minion's death rattle. So why would I play anything else when turn three I could just play that and keep on curve and you know just get as much value as possible, and that ends up working out. So you might as well just do things like that, right? You might as well maximize your value. Look at that. We're just doing pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead and trade there because there's no reason to attack into this, and then I die and he doesn't get anything, and there's no reason to go face and keep that alive. Uh, Hearthstone's arena generally works best when you are trading as much as possible, and then when you have open board, you go face. Unless there's obvious decisions that you're like, you know what, obviously I, I don't think I should go face in this particular instance. And then you obviously just don't. What to do? What to do? So let's see what he does. This could be a really long episode or a really short episode, depending. Oh, because you're eliminated after three losses, but you can max cap at 12 wins. So there's that. Phew. This thing is kind of taking forever. Do, do, do. Okay, that's pretty good. We clear his board next turn. We got Kona Cold, which frees the minion on his side or whatever. Oh, he gains plus one, plus one. Okay, that kind of does suck. Completely. Ugh. That was the worst possible. That was the worst possible hit knife juggler. You failed your boy. Because if he would have hit this, I would have crashed and hit with my hero power. If he would have hit this, I would have crashed here and hit with my hero power. But it hit that. It was a 33% chance to hit face, and it did. So that's, that happens. We just uh, deal with it. But if it would have hit anything else, it would have been just a way better outcome. So I'm just saying. Okay. And deal one damage next to them. We deal one damage to them. See, there's damage to all of them. Ugh, excuse me. I literally just woke I up. Wonder. I wonder. Don't attack Knife Juggler. Attack this guy. Attack this guy. Attack this guy. Attack this guy. Ha ha ha. Get baited. Attack this guy, dude. Attack this guy, dude. It's really good. He's really good at attack. He's an unearthed raptor. Like he's not. He hasn't been earthed yet. Frick. All right. Well, you made the right play. I'll give you that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We got attack into that. But we got Ice Lands. That, that combos with the... The Kona Cold, right? Because Kona Cold does freeze them and then this does damage to frozen characters. So that could deal. That could help. Eventually. Who knows? Who knows where this game's going? See, that's not good. He can only attack once with him, though. Which is fine by me. Do. Mm, we could technically clear his board next turn, but I don't feel like that's the correct play. Although I have to think about it because I could Cone of Cold here. 
and then they take a damage each, and then I could just effectively trade and summon Micro Machine, right? Or I could summon Cairn. I'm just gonna save Conical because there's no reason to use it right now, you know? Like, there's not a reason to. Yeah, I might take, you know, some damage next turn, but it's nothing like too crazy, in my opinion. So, I think we're, we did the right play by just uh, breaking it that way. By the way, he had Divine Shield, which remember, Divine Shield, you have to break it first. Okay, well, he could do that, too. Okay, that was a good play. He's going to attack face and trade, or he's going to trade first? Okay, well, he's making the right play, at least. Okay, well, he made the right play. Because he had two attacks with him, because he had Wind Fury. So he attacked once with face and then once to the trade, which was a correct play. Because if he would have traded first, he would have just died, obviously. He has a hero power. He has a secret. Secrets, pretty much. You don't know what they are until they get revealed. I'm going to guess it's Vaporize. It's not Vaporize. It's going to be Mirror Entity. Yeah. So Mirror Entity just copies what you play. Remember, I played that before <laughs> in the Constructed deck. So I wanted to play the 1-1. One, one. Like, I could have summoned this guy first, but look how bad the outcome would have been had I summoned this guy first. You got to play around secrets. That's the problem about secrets. You got to play around them, and then you don't know what they are. And sometimes they get you off guard. He could have had a counterspell too, but he didn't. So now we're in a pretty good spot, I would say, compared to him. But it's, I, we're definitely not in the in the go. We're not in the uh, hmm, We're not in the victory zone yet, right? Because he has five cards in hand, and we don't know what any of those five cards are. We could literally have, like, Fireball, 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 or Blizzard, which is just equally as annoying. He has two mana left. He's going to probably pink something. Alright. So there goes one AoE, making me think that he doesn't have Flame Striker. He would have played it. This is 3, 4, 6. That's 13, 14. He'll be 17 by my next turn. Um, there's no way to get lethal next turn. Unless I drop deck something. Which I don't think I have any way to top deck anything. Um, we'll attack. We go. We'll attack. We'll attack. This is going to put so much pressure on him though now. Like he's going to be forced to destroy this. Or he's going to like fireball this to gain 8 health. Which, if he fireballs that, it's so fine. Like, oof, yes, to do that, please. If you're fireballing that and not my face, you're my best friend. I just wanted, you let, wanted to let you know that. He can still have, like, oh, okay, so there he goes. He has two explosive sheeps. Well, that sucks for me. That's another way to clear. Drogno, stupid. He's getting low on cards, though, as you can see. So, it's fact, in, in fact, it's almost best to trade here. So, he gives us health. And we build up our board again. And we know that he's going to have to hero power this. Which he's going to hero power that. I feel like there's no way around him not hero powering that. So, then he's only at 8 mana and 2 cards left in hand. And meanwhile, we have 2 creatures on board. And... Well, he has three cards in hand, and we have three creatures on board. So we already match his cards on hand with cards on board, but we have five cards in hand, which he has no idea what they could be. I have to sneeze. I oh, damn. All right, well, he had that. And now his cards cost five, so now he can't play anything else. But he could hero power. Whatever, I'm going to go Spell Slinger. But I bet you he's going to get a better card than me. Oh, Light Bomb is so good, though. But he, I bet you he got a really good card. Like I'm calling it now because he can't hear me, but you guys can hear me. Because it's kind of like not live, but, you know, you're getting a retros retrospective view of how I'm playing this game. And I bet you that card is just so good. Watch. He's going to play it now. Nope, I guess not. Oh, yes, he is. Please be shady, dude. Because this gives a random spell to each player. We got a pretty good one. Oh, he doesn't even have a taunt. Whoops. Mistake. What a mistake. It would have given him plus three, plus three for free. 
but he <laughs> he thought it was on board or something, and he played it in the wrong order. So that's how you uh, throw the game completely. Do I trade it with this and just? Uh, I think I, I I'll just crash this. I don't have an eight seven. Personally. Yeah, we know that. If it's stealth, it can't taunt, so he could just go face. But the reason I did that is I didn't want him targeting him with, like, um, spells or anything. Because where there's stealth, they can't be targeted by spells and stuff. So he's, like, on the low low right now. So next turn, he can come up and, you know, beat, beat his face in. Like, see, he's trying to target it with whatever he drew, but he can't do that because it's stealth. And uh, pretty much that misplay cost him a lot. I still would have been able to clear it, as you can see. But, you know, I would have been clearing it and not going to his face. So it would have been a big difference. And then he concedes because obviously that misplay just destroyed him. But again, I still had like a play around that. On oh, the good thing is we're leveling up. We're unlock. We're leveling him up as well as we play this. All right. So um, like we still had a thing, but remember we did like 12 damage to the face in that one attack, right? But that would have been going into his uh, guy. And it would have been 7 attack, so he wouldn't have even killed him, but then my would have been at 1 health, and then he would have hero powered it next turn. And then he drew, like, a spell card, you know? Like, the game would have been complete. Like, the game would still be going on right now, easily. <laughs> so, this is a good hand. So, I'm going to play this turn 1, and then when I quit, my dagger gets plus 1 attack. And then I can play this turn 3, but I don't want to play him turn 3, since I'm for sure playing Ogre Brute, Ogre Brute over the other guy turn 3. We drew our Sylvanas. Which is so dumb, because I promise you, on my... On my regular account, playing Arena, it must have been, it must have been like, I don't know, like 15 Arena runs I counted before I got my first, my first Legendary in my pack, like in my deck, and then literally like, oof, I want to say a bunch other, oh damn, that's a really good draw. Wait, not really. Um, and then, um... And then like another like 20 until, until I get my next one. But the thing is, I don't really play Arena that much on my actual account. So he's not going to hero power this way. Is he not going to do that? Really? Wrath? Wild growth? Okay, well, you know, that's not that bad. I'm not going to hero power because if he kills this this turn, then I don't get the two attack weapon. So might as well keep the two attack weapon, you know? You feel me? You feel me on that one? Alright. If he doesn't kill this, though, I'm probably playing Knife Juggler and Hero Power Ring. Just to complete my mana curve, because that's four mana, respectively. Oh, okay. Oh, you got that. You got that. You got me. We're still going to do this, though. Because if Knife Juggler hits Ooze... If Knife Juggler hits Ooze this time, don't miss, please. Come on, hit him, hit him, hit him, hit him, hit him, hit him. There you go. Then we just Hero Power that away. And then he doesn't have a target to miss. And then he goes for free face damage. For three mana, dude, pretty good. Because if you don't know, all ogres have like a 50% chance to hit the wrong enemy, or like they're legendary, it makes everybody have a 50% chance to hit the wrong target, which is funny. So Vanessa is just a really good legendary, like in actual like ranked competitive Hearthstone. So it's really good that we got him, got her. I don't know how good she is in arena. Maybe she's not even that good, but I mean, it's still a good card, you know. It's still six mana, five five, and if it dies, it takes an enemy minion, you know, like. I feel like it can only be so bad. Okay, so I'm stuck with a harder decision, I think. How about this? I'll attempt to go face. If he hits the creature, then we'll trade. Okay, he gets the creature. So we'll trade. And then we'll build up a board. So that was a really good freaking minion for him to play, man. That was a really good minion. That would have countered our thingy uh, last turn. But it was six mana. I mean, five mana. So, I mean, he would only had five mana left. But. Damn. I felt like I was in a really good spot there, but that shit just kind of threw me off. And this one even worse. 
But I'm gonna play Sylvanas this turn because it's gonna make him awkwardly trade into it. Watch. I have no time for games. I'm just gonna go face. Obviously, I'm not gonna trade here. So what can he do to Sylvanas here? He can like, if he destroys it first, then that's complete misplay because then I just take his monster, his minion, whatever. But he's gonna probably swarm the board because it takes a random enemy minion, right? And um, if you have more minions, obviously you can make me have a crappier chance. Like obviously when this guy dies, oh look, he has another chance. Hey, <laughs> like he's just summoning the board. Okay, that's fine. So I am thinking. Okay, so we could play two creatures, draw a card, and then destroy this. And then he really... I think that's the right play. Because the thing is... Um, oh, okay. Oh, oh, gosh. I almost didn't attack. So the thing is, he can like attack into this and he'll die he could attack into this he'll die he could attack into this he'll die but death in hearthstone cards that were on board first trigger first so since he was on board before my guy he his death rattle is going to work first right so yeah that's pretty much my thought process on that play so we get a weapon pretty good weapon now he gets taunt he's just storming the board as you see but we're just going to eventually just trade into everything take his life and he's going to feel bad man So I think this turn we're going to go Spiteful Smith and Pitchfork. Unless otherwise noted, but looks like it's not otherwise noted. Right, we can destroy that easily. We can destroy that easily. We can destroy that easily. And we're just like clearing down his board. Like, that Sylvanas has put so much pressure on that poor guy. Like, he's probably sweating right now. Like, holy shit, dude. So much fucking pressure. And he doesn't know what to do. Poor guy. I feel bad. I do. Boom, he's just gonna go face, trade there. What is he gonna do now? Like, okay. He's gonna go short. So he finally got over Sylvanas. But as you see, he's kind of in an awkward spot. He's gonna coin. He's got two cards left in hand. Not, oh, Sludge Belcher, though. That's good. So yeah. Sludge Belcher is just really fucking good actually. <laughs> like kind of scary like good. Okay. That's actually good just because it's Divine Shield and Taunt. You're just going to gain some armor. And then we can just like... The thing is that Druid doesn't really have a lot of area of effects, like a lot of board clear, so I think we're fine here and we probably just won the game. But uh, yeah, that was a little better of a game and you just see how dumb Sylvanas is and he just had to play around it so hard. Because his deck was pretty good, he had really good cards in his deck, but um, he just had he just got in an awkward position with that Sylvanas being there. And that's game. So 2-0 and is pretty good start to our first arena run, I would say. Our deck is pretty strong as well. And we got a thingy, and we're just getting a bunch of uh, quests done as well. So yeah.